Praise God. Hello, beloved church family. Wednesday evening worship service. Oh my goodness, it's so good to be here. Praise God. What an awesome, awesome God we serve. Amen. He's head over heels in love with you. Jesus Christ is Lord. You just think about Lord Jesus Christ and, and the Holy Spirit's just showing me. Many of you just overwhelmed just like that. Hallelujah. How could we not? Amen. That we have a God that loves us so much and you look at what Lord Jesus Christ has done and continues to do through Holy Spirit in every beloved child of God, and you're just in a loss, in a loss of words, amen, that, that we have a God, a Father that loves us that much, and it's beyond anything that we can ever comprehend or understand, amen, and we just pray that, you know, for one, first and foremost, for ourselves, amen, that, that we bless God, and that we allow God to, to flow through us, and, and that, you know, that we're not in religion, and we're not in tradition, and we're not allowing darkness to come in. Amen. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. And uh, we just allow his presence to, to overflow. And the glory of God is, is that when we make this vapor of a life, right, when we make everything about Lord Jesus Christ, it's uncomprehendable. I love that word. It's uncomprehendable. The goodness of his anointing overflowing in that beloved child of God. Amen. Say with me, I am. Praise God, I am. And that's who he is. Amen. The great I am, the Alpha and Omega. Praise God. Hallelujah. Agape. And I pray in Jesus' name in this next half an hour or so. I know some of you are like, yeah, whatever, half an hour. But, <laughs> but I pray that in this next few moments that, that we as one, no matter where you're at, praise God, no matter what time you turned on this worship service, God is bigger than we can ever possibly imagine, but he sees right through us. He sees our heart. That I pray that in this next few moments that, that we just come and we just, we just bless God Almighty and, and just be thankful for Lord Jesus Christ and allow his Holy Spirit to speak to us. Amen. And um, let's just be obedient. Let's just open up in prayer. Praise God. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that we are eternally yours, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, it's all about you. We lift up your holy and precious name. It's all about you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, in everything, we fear you, Father God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And Holy Spirit, you are our only teacher. We bless your holy presence, Father. And Heavenly Father, all we can do is speak for Open Arms Community Church, where you have planted us, Father God, where we are rooted in your holy church, Father God saturated by your holy water, Holy Spirit. We are unified in you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we can only speak for us, Pastor John, myself, all the elders, Father God, your leadership, deacons, as one body, Father, one body. We are all your children. We worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. All eyes are on you, Lord. We don't look to no man, Father God. We, we only look to you, and we bless you, Father. And in these next few moments, Father God, there's many of us right now, Father, that's just saying, restore me. Help me, Father. There's many of us, Father God, right now that are going through things. Father, I believe and declare in this anointed message that you have for us, Holy Spirit, that you would fill us in the overflow. I pray, Father God, for our youth, our teenagers. Father God, of course for everyone, Father, but you specifically told me right now to call them out. That they would be grounded in you, Lord Jesus Christ. That they won't act like this world acts that they won't allow their friends or, or these influences of the devil of this world to, to even come near them, Father, that they will be thankful for you, Lord Jesus Christ, and Father, in your presence, Father God, that they will love and honor themselves, themselves, the Holy of Holies, you within us, Lord Jesus Christ, your Holy Spirit, and their parents and their friends, Father. I'm so thankful for this, Father. And Father, we just want to bless you. We plead your holy blood, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so much, Father, as always, for every breath. And we know, Father, we know that our breath is numbered. And we're so thankful, Father God, that you're coming back for us soon. We worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. We plead your blood and we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your wisdom and your anointing. Teach us, O Lord. And it's in Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. And all God's beloved said, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. God bless you guys. Amen. Give somebody a high five. Your family. Your children, praise God, your pets, whoever you're with, amen, praise God. You're never by yourself. Give Holy Spirit a high five, amen. And don't forget the angels, hallelujah. High five, love high fives, praise God. 
uh, Pastor Tish did something different, and we got to do fist bumps. And boy, I was upstairs with Brother Ryan and, and, uh, and the elders. Uh, I had, we were all up there, you know, because we're learning all this new stuff that God has blessed us with in this new season. And Brother Dustin was up there, and, and uh, I saw the fist bumps, and I was like, I want to be part of that. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, I'm, just, I'm just so thankful, just like you, beloved church family. I mean, God just wants his children to be happy. And I'm so thankful that we have this message tonight, amen, The Holy Spirit has, has us just going back to the root, the, to the root, say that word with me, the, the root of our joy, and it all, it all is in Lord Jesus Christ, amen, amen, he says it, right, he says it, that you have to be in him in order to produce Holy Spirit fruit, amen. I am the vine, you are the branch. Many of you know John 15. And praise God, that's not even up here. That wasn't a part. The Holy Spirit just wants to plug that in as far as, you know, who are you a part of? Amen. Because what is right now, what is, what is being produced in your life? Praise God. Like, what is the fruit of your life? Amen. Is the fruit of your life, and I'm just asking, beloved child of God, is the fruit of your life victory? Amen. Is, your, is, the fruit of, is, is the fruit of your life, is the proof of your fruit, right, the way you speak life and life in abundance, amen? So I pray that when we get these visuals and we go through the scriptures, we got a lot to go through, hallelujah, that it's, it's going to bless Holy Spirit in you, amen? Because remember, agape is speaking the word, and I pray that we have ears right now to hear and eyes to see. The glory of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You ready? Praise God. Say amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you think about those happy times. Can you say it with me? Happy times. Amen. You think about those happy times. And for those of us who are married, maybe those of you who are not married yet. Praise God. Brother Dustin and Sister Hannah are going to be married this week. Hallelujah. Keep them lifted up in prayer. Praise God. And for both families coming together. What an exciting moment. Amen. And maybe you're not married. Maybe you're dating. Oh, my goodness. Right? Boyfriend, girlfriend, oh, you hang up the phone first. No, you hang up first, right? Oh, I love you. No, I love you. Oh, you know, just, and I'm not teasing. I just, I love that. Many of you who know my heart, I, I know we're being goofy and, and we're laughing, but, right, we, we love that because it takes you back to that part, that, that part of your life, that moment, where you're just, oh, so happy, right? So happy, amen? And uh, I got other pictures for you. What about like, like that, right? For those of you who are blessed with children, amen? That's such a happy moment, praise God. Just the pureness of, of, that, of that happiness, right? Just the pureness of that, right? The innocence of, of holding God's angel, amen? That's what they are, praise God. All, all the little children, they're, they're, they're angels. They're physical angels here on earth, praise God. And, and, and I just love that picture, right? And of course, there's, there, there's some of us that, that don't have you know, children, amen? So what about a bunch of puppies? Huh? <laughs> you can't like a picture of a bunch of puppies, right? I know some are like, well, I'm allergic and all stuff, but they're not real. You're not going to sneeze. I mean, look, right? Oh, right? Speaking of puppies, what about this one? Look at that. Look how happy he is, right? My gosh, look how happy he is with that ball. Just bonsai, right? Just, just... I, I hope there's a swimming pool underneath them. I didn't see in the picture when I put it up there, but Holy Spirit said, share that. And praise God, that's what we do, amen? But look how happy, right? Just, oh my goodness, this is my ball. <laughs> and he just took off. Uh, what about this one? Praise God. <laughs> I love this picture. <laughs> how much happier could this dog be with that cheeseburger in his mouth like that, right? Praise God. How much happier? I just love pure pictures like this. You know, you guys get insight as far as things that, you know, I look at on occasion just to be thankful. Amen. Say with me, be thankful. Praise God. And hallelujah, look at that. You don't see that every day. Just a baby elephant just playing on the beach. Praise God. So all these pictures just leads us to the title of this worship service. For those of you who are watching on Facebook or on YouTube, you probably saw the graphic already. But it's titled, Pure Joy. Amen? And in Pure Joy, we're going to be in the book of James, chapter 1. We're going to go uh, through a few verses there. And we're going to go into the gospel of Matthew. 
And we're going to be in Matthew 8. We're going to go through a few scriptures there and then in Matthew 14. So James 1, Matthew 8, and Matthew 14. Praise God. I pray that, you know, through all of our worship services, that after we're done in worship, you know, together, that you take note of these scriptures and between you and God and, and just your intimacy and your study time to just get, get back into these scriptures and um, ask Holy Spirit for more life-changing revelation, amen? Because many of you know, amen, as beloved children of God, the Holy Bible is alive, amen? Where is it alive? In here, amen? And so I, I encourage you to, to go back even after we go through the worship service and everything is concluded, praise God. So once again, say this with me, pure joy, amen? In James 1, verses 2 through 3, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So immediately Holy Spirit wants to take us into a storyline, breaking down this scripture, just, just in these couple verses, amen? That we consider it pure joy whenever we face trials of many kinds. And that we know that this is a testing of our faith and in this testing, it will produce perseverance. And this is what Holy Spirit asked to do. When we consider pure joy, we have to think about all those pictures that we just saw that many of us, praise God, have already experienced in our life. Amen. Remember, whether it was dating, you know, right now some of us are dating, right? Whether you're married, hallelujah, praise God. You got favor, amen. Or you got children, glory to God, hallelujah. You have a seed, amen, you have a seed, and, and there's that beloved child, and, and God has blessed you, amen, with the anointing, hallelujah, to just keep speaking life, right? And, um, you know, where you got pets or whatever it is, right? You know, the pure joy moments, it's personal. It's between you and God as far as when you experience that pure joy, amen? Maybe it was a promotion, right? Maybe it was getting the first degree, right, or more, maybe the fourth or fifth degree. I don't know. Maybe it was buying the house or the vehicle, right? Praise God. Maybe getting the vehicle fixed. Hallelujah, right? <laughs> but whatever it was, it was pure joy. And this is a transition that God wants us to make in our worship service this evening. The Holy Spirit is asking us right now to examine this pureness of this joy and translate it into the written word of God, which we're going to do here in the book of James but also as far as within our hearts. Amen, say with me a heart check, amen. And in this heart check, there is no greater pure joy than what Father God said to his beloved perfect son when he come out of the water. Can I get an amen? When he come out of the water, and he said, this is my beloved, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased, amen? Say it with me, this is pure joy. There is no more purest joy than the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, of when he would minister to whoever had ears to hear, right? Whether it was the Pharisees, Sadducees, his disciples, whether it was people along the roadside, right? Whether it was a divine encounter, a divine orchestration, Amen. Because every step was divinely orchestrated by our Father God. Amen. But regardless who the audience was, the pure joy in our Lord Jesus Christ was talking about His Father. Amen. Was talking about His kingdom. Was talking about His peace and His love. What we call agape. Amen. Why do we say agape? It's the love of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's in this love, praise God, that there is the pure joy. Amen. And as we move on, the testing of your faith. I know the pictures are kind of small, but this is the picture of the crucifixion of Lord Jesus Christ that we love to put up here at Open Arms Community Church. Why? Because it checks us to realize what agape did to pay for us. Amen. Amen. That we are property. Amen. You see my shirt. This is what God did for us. Amen. What did we do for God, right? And praise God. I pray right now in this moment, Father, I'm worshiping you. I'm just thanking you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
And this is the testing of our faith. Who is our faith? His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Faith has a name, and his name is Lord Jesus Christ. He is our faith. He is our shield, amen? He is the one, hallelujah, that protects us, that extinguishes the fiery darts of the enemy, amen? Produces perseverance. And it's in his perfection, as you can see in this illustration, the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, who is now and for eternity seated at the throne of our Heavenly Father, all authority, amen, all authority, all power, hallelujah, all glory unto Lord Jesus Christ, so that our Father is glorified, amen, and the Holy Spirit is glorified within the temple. And this is where you see pure joy, faith, and perseverance. Why is this very important? As we continue, we will see as far as how Holy Spirit wants to give us this fresh anointing from heaven in order to have pure joy as we face trials, tribulations, as we come across distractions. Amen? Because remember, the devil has distractions, right? Facebook. I don't have it, I don't do it, and I won't. Amen? I won't. I'll be raptured out of here with no social media. And, and, and for those of you who know me, I, I'm a social guy. I mean, praise God, I know a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, text a whole bunch, email. But God said, you are not doing that. Amen? And you know, I hear, I hear many people's opinions, some hurtful opinions. Or you could be more effective if you did this, if you go do that, if you go do that. I listen to what Holy Spirit tells me to do. Amen? You see, the same way goes for you. God may have gifted you to be a giant in, 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 in social media platforms and doing all those things. And that's what God and you are doing together, right? Because God has ordained you and blessed you to do that. Amen? You see, the, the, the reason why we're taking this, this slight pause in this worship service is that the way we find pure joy is when we focus on the one who is joy, amen, who is the fruit, amen, that's agape, Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, when you focus on that, when you start focusing on other people and what they're doing or what they say or what they think you should do or what they, then guess what, what happens is, is the enemy comes in to try to disturb that joy, to disturb the relationship with God, amen, say it with me, no more, hallelujah, no more. And this is ultimately the perseverance in what God wants to do through every beloved child of God. And this is the perseverance of Holy Spirit. As you saw in the illustration, you saw the joy of Lord Jesus Christ. You saw the faith. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And you saw the perseverance of Lord Jesus Christ through the power of Holy Spirit because Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. He is in heaven. Amen. But he left us his peace. Amen. He sent us his comforter, his spirit. Amen. He is Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is in you and in me. And he is the one that perseveres. He's our advocate. Right? He is the one encouraging us. Amen. To not give up. Praise God. Not give up. Hallelujah. We heard it this past Sunday. Praise God. Holy Spirit spoke it perfectly through Elder Charlie. Amen. Amen. I didn't hear no trumpet yet. Right? I, get up. I didn't hear no trumpet yet. Hallelujah. That's Holy Spirit in you and in me. Right? You stay focused on Lord Jesus. Look at what Lord Jesus did for you. Don't give up. You start speaking blessings. Amen? I know they hurt you, but you don't hurt them back. You pray for them. Amen? And that is who God is. Amen? Praise God. So let's finish. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. Ask God for wisdom. Any of you who are taking right now notes, please write that down. Ask God for wisdom. I'm also going to say this. Praise God. Holy Spirit said, be planted. Be planted in a holy Bible-based church. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Be planted. Praise God. Praise God. And please, you, whatever church building you belong to, amen, we are all the body of Christ, but get planted. And, and please share with us the name because we want to pray for your, your beloved church family as well. We are all one, but get planted in a holy Bible-based church 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We like to say agape, amen? The reason why this is so important is that if you notice, God is saying right here, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. Now this is what I'm going to say quickly. I've had so many people come to me and say, well, this is what Holy Spirit told me, and this is what I'm going to do. The sad part is, is that hardly anyone says, you know, I've been praying about this, but I would like prayer, and I would like to ask you, elders, deacons, I want to ask for prayer. Because I want to make sure that I am not saying this out of my pride, my deceitful heart. That I want to make sure that I ask for prayer from leadership, from my church body, from my church family. Because all of you, I know, will pray. And as you pray and ask God, maybe we can come together later on today, whenever. And we can talk about it. Amen? Once again, if you're taking notes, please write this notes. Because far too many people are deceived. Because as a beloved child of God... If you approach me and you say, this is what Holy Spirit told me, I'm not going to argue it. I have nothing to say. All I can say is, I'm going to pray for you. God bless you. you. You already said, that's what Holy Spirit told you. But if you approach me and said, I, I, I've been praying about this to the Father. And Holy Spirit has put this on my heart. But I'm not making any decisions because I am just asking for prayer. Because I want to do exactly what God has for me to do. I want His wisdom. Amen? You see, wisdom takes place only through Christ our Lord. And how do you obtain this wisdom? It's in prayer. But far too often, we like to misinterpret the desires of our heart, and we say that Holy Spirit said so, when the truth is, it's just what you want. It's just what you desire. But true wisdom is, is that when you ask a brother, a sister, amen, when, when you ask the body, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, because I, I got this going on right now, and I, and, I, and, I, and I want God's wisdom. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. You receive that? Praise God. Listen, beloved church family, all Holy Spirit's wanting to do is to protect his beloved children. Amen? Because it's easy for you to say, oh, well, this is what God wants, and then later on down the line, it doesn't work out the way you want, and then you reflect back on it, and you're like, well, I thought this is what God wanted, but I went and I just I went ahead and I just cut ties with everybody and I didn't even ask for anyone's prayer. And God put a God is a God of order. Amen. Listen, our elders, our elders love us. Amen. They love us. Our elders will do anything for you. They seek God first and, and they want to protect God's house through prayer, through worship. Amen. Pleading the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, being obedient to God, and they want to pray for you. Amen. I, Pastor John, Pastor myself, I want to pray for you. I want, I want to help you. But listen, if you approach, if you approach saying this is what I say or this is what Holy Spirit says, I'm not going to come against that because that's what you decided. Amen. And God wants to bless us with wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom. Amen. So let's, let, let's put that wisdom into practice because how much trouble is it to just call or text somebody and say, can you pray for me? I'm going through this season right now and I, and I know what my heart is saying and I'm just asking God for, for, for wisdom, but I know that in his wisdom that I should ask for prayer. Amen? And I believe and declare in Jesus' name the Holy Spirit will give you clarity and wisdom and you'll get confirmation upon confirmation Amen. Through the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's move on. Hallelujah. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Can I repeat that? That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Now let's go into this next graphic, and we, and we broke it up so that we can, and I pray that you can, you can see that on the screen, and you could read that. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. It's like a wave in the sea, and this illustration just shows a rough sea, rough waters. Say that with me, rough waters. 
And God says such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. God even takes it further and says don't expect anything. Why? Because you have one foot in, one foot out. You know, you're playing games with God, right? And once again, this is just an illustration that Holy Spirit wants to bring to the forefront of our minds. Because remember, what we're doing is fighting to bless Holy Spirit's presence. And how many of you want to live in pure joy? Amen? How many of you want to live just in God's will, right? That God's hand has rested upon you and your house. Hallelujah, and he has shielded you. Amen. That's who Lord Jesus Christ is. Praise God. And God right now is giving us wisdom in order to just bless his presence and to allow his spirit to overflow. Amen. So let's make this transition into the gospel of Matthew. Praise God. In Matthew, it says right here, Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. We need to remember this took place after, after Lord Jesus Christ healed Peter's mother-in-law, right? And uh, he was ministering, and he, he, you know, he told him, let's just, just get in the boat, right? And let's just, let's just go. Amen? And so they got in the boat, and they all said, let's go. They got in the boat, and they were going to go to the other side. Lord Jesus Christ spoke it. Let's go to the other side. Amen? There's different translations in the Bible. You could, you could study it here in Matthew 8. And then they got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm... A furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. Praise God. I know in our church family, we've got a lot of fishermen. Amen. And that's a big wave. Amen. And you could just imagine how choppy, remember, the wind and the waves, how powerful that was. But Jesus was sleeping. Don't you love that? He was just out. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. Lord Jesus Christ replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. So when we, when we apply what took place in the book of James and how God was talking about a double-minded person, how did God describe what a double-minded person, what a doubter, a naysayer, right? Well, how did God describe that individual in what he was like? He or she, what, what he or she was like, right? Like a wave, right? Tossed by the wind here and there. Right? And this is what Holy Spirit wants to teach us from the living word, from the written word, who is alive in you and in me, Lord Jesus Christ, is this. That when Lord Jesus Christ says, you of little faith, right? You of little faith. We have to directly apply what is being taught. Who is our faith? Right? Who is our faith? His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And I love it when you apply this you of little faith because you could hear God saying, how big is your God? Amen? Hallelujah. How big is your Jesus? Whoo, hallelujah. How big is your faith, right? In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I know, I know, praise God. I know, praise God. As Open Arms Community Church, praise God, I know. Our God is God Almighty, Agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Even as I say this right now, in this sanctuary, it's just filling, hallelujah, this building, amen? His name is Lord Jesus Christ, amen? There is no greater, hallelujah, the name above every name, there is no greater. He is our faith, amen? And don't you love how God says, how great is your God, right? How big is your God? You of little faith, right? Is your Jesus little? Remember the illustration that we went through a couple weeks ago, right? Is your spirit man this big and your flesh as big as I am? There's something, right? There's something that needs to be addressed, amen? There's something that needs to be crucified at the altar of Lord Jesus Christ. Or is your faith, hallelujah, 
Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Holy One, the perfect Lamb of God. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I don't want to jump ahead. Let's continue on. Praise God. We're going to make this transition into another story in Matthew. Amen? And it just goes a few chapters after eight. Praise God. Let's get right into that. Praise God. Now remember, we talked about this. And, and, and I jumped ahead slightly, but God just wants to show what it physically looks like, physically looks like being double-minded in a description taken from James 1, right? Being tossed. You know, have you ever been tossed, right? If you're on a boat and you're being tossed, right? I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to make anybody seasick, but if you're being tossed back and forth, it's kind of like the illustration Holy Spirit taught us not too long ago, being in a tug of war, being in the middle, right? Right? Being pulled this way and pulled that way, right? Being tossed here and there. And that is what God is saying, that if you're not completely sold out in who I am, this world will, this world will distract you. And it's in this distraction where you start to waver back and forth, right? And God is saying, stop! Can you say that with me? Stop! Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. God is head over heels in love with you. Amen. He is no longer a distant God. He lives in you. The power of Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. And God has given us this ability, praise God, to protect our pure joy. Amen. To rejoice. Remember the pure joy. Remember what David said in Psalms, I believe, 51. Restore to me, O Lord, the joy of your salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. The joy of your salvation. I believe in Nehemiah chapter 8. Right? I believe in Nehemiah chapter 8. The joy of the Lord. Amen. Is my strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when we know that the joy, the pure joy of God is just to be in complete worship despite all the waves and all that stuff, God is saying, how big is your faith? Amen. Faith has a name. Hallelujah. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So let's go into this next in Matthew chapter 14. Praise God. Verse 29. Come. You guys know where we're headed with this. Praise God. Right? Come. Now remember the same situation, the same distraction of the enemy. The same distraction. Of the, enemy. the only difference is Lord Jesus Christ wasn't in that boat now. He wasn't in that boat. So here's the lesson that Holy Spirit wants to teach us. Amen? The story that we've already went through in Matthew 8, right? Lord Jesus was in that boat, sleeping. Amen? And they woke him, and he taught them how to rebuke double-mindedness, right? How to rebuke religion and tradition. How to rebuke, right? How to rebuke distractions, right? How did he rebuke it? Be still. Hallelujah. Who is the word of God? <laughs> Many of you beat me to it. Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith. Amen. He demonstrated the faith of God by speaking. Be still. Now here it is just a few chapters later. Lord Jesus Christ isn't in the boat sleeping. And the same distraction from the enemy starts happening. And now... They are in a panic. They don't know what to do. When God already taught them. Holy Spirit already taught them what to do. Amen? So they go through all this and they see, they, the, the Word of God says, study it when you get a chance. The Word of God says that they were consumed with fear. You can just imagine Holy Spirit will teach you. Amen? You can just imagine what they were going through and the conversations they were having. You know, you, you could already hear some of them saying, oh, this is it. Oh my gosh, this is it. Uh, that, that wave was really big. We're, we're done, right? You have some just saying, be quiet. Don't, don't say that, you know, and, and just beyond, just stressed out. And then all of a sudden, they see Lord Jesus. And then they think, they think that is, let's just go on. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of his boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Right? I love this picture. It's on my computer. I love looking at this picture all the time. Amen? Because this is what Lord Jesus Christ did for this entire world. Amen? He reached down 
into the pit of hell. Saved us, amen? And I love that because they were so consumed with fear that they thought it was an evil spirit, that they, they didn't even recognize Lord Jesus Christ. That's what fear can do, right? You see, once these distractions come, the very first thing it wants to do, it, it wants to get rid of your joy. It wants to get rid of your joy. All of a sudden now you're just serious. All of, us, all of a sudden now you're not filled with laughter, you're not filled with, you know, this, you're not filled with, you know, excitement and anticipation of the blessings of the Lord and, and uh, the, the steps that God has divinely orchestrated before you. It's now, and now rather than having this outlook in life, right, to the faith, Lord Jesus Christ, it becomes now an inward when, when, when the enemy distracts us and he tries to take our joy. And now it becomes inward, and now it's the self-pity, right? It's the victim mentality. Now anxiety, right? And this is exactly what the enemy wants. See, once again, he has no power over you. The devil doesn't. Lord Jesus Christ has all the power. And his resurrection power is alive in you and in me. Amen? And this is why he gave us the ability, the power to do greater things, that when we feel this happen, immediately we could say, I'm not going down this road. Father, I thank you. I'm not going to be like the wind and the waves being double-minded. I'm not going to be like that. I rebuke that. I'm not going to be a naysayer. Amen? I'm not going to surround myself by, with negative people, right, that want to grumble and complain. I'm not. I'm going to fight to protect you, Holy Spirit, and be a blessing to you, God, and a blessing to your people. Amen? Listen, beloved church, right? yes, we are called to go and preach the word of God and minister the word of God. And what God wants you to do is to show and expose his light to this fallen world by being, amen, being loving, amen, showing all the fruits. It starts with love, amen, love. Then what's right after the love? Joy, amen. I am saved for all of eternity, hallelujah. And this is a perfect picture of showing salvation, praise God. Lord Jesus, you guys know the story. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand caught him. You of little faith, <laughs> how big is your God? Amen? How big is my God? Amen? He's the only one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's the only one and true God. Amen? God Almighty. He has all the power. Hallelujah. All the power, the Alpha and the Omega for all of eternity. Amen? And he says this. He says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when he climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Amen? Truly, you are the Son of God. I pray that this word bless you this evening. Amen? That how God would describe and define a double-minded individual. That God himself say, listen, it's not the preacher. God not only said it in his written word, but he proves it time and time again because our Father God is a God of order. That if you don't believe and you doubt, you are like a wave tossed here and there, right? And don't expect anything. I pray in Jesus' name, that's not rebuke that. That's not who you are. Say with me, I rebuke that. Amen. In Jesus' name, Father God, we rebuke that. We believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in your Holy Spirit, Father God. We believe that we are your beloved children. Amen. And it's in this believing now that God says, how big am I in your life? Amen. How big is your faith? How big is your Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. How big? Amen. And glory to God, this is when, oh, this is when the devil flees. Because now it's no longer about you going, mm, mm. it's about you going, Abba, Father, I love you. I thank you, Father God. That what you did through Christ, my Lord, is perfect. There's nothing lacking. And Holy Spirit, you live now on the inside. You have sealed me for all of eternity. The kingdom of heaven is within. Amen. And I pray that as a, I, I pray that as a beloved child of God, personally, I pray that we can rest in this agape. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Rest in this love so that his pure joy manifests within our heart. And glory to God, his faith, his shield, amen, 
His shield will extinguish every fiery dart of the enemy. And Holy Spirit's sword, the sword that we speak from the word of God, will be released into the atmosphere. That we speak blessings and we speak life and we speak breakthrough. And praise God, it's all to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Let's just give God praise. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much, Father, for all of eternity for Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for who you are. You are good, kind, and perfect, Father. You are God Almighty, Father God. And Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. You are seated at the throne. Father, you have all, all of our worship, all of the glory. You have all of us, Father God, all of us, Father. Open Arms Community Church is your holy church, Father, paid for in full through your holy blood. And Holy Spirit, we bless your presence. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you in every worship service, Holy Spirit, you teach us. And your anointing, your presence flows through us, Father. And thank you, Father God, for guarding us and protecting us, Father. Thank you that your light pushes evil far, far, far away, Father. And thank you so much, Father God, that you bless us to be unified in your body, in your spirit. Bless us, O Lord, Father. I just thank you so much in Jesus' name and all God's beloved said. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Praise God. God is good all the time. It just keeps getting gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Love you all so, so very much. Praise God. I pray I see you all Sunday morning worship service. If not, I'll see you in the next half an hour. Amen. Love you guys so much. God bless. Mwah.